Salam everyone, welcome to my channel Daring Din Vlog. Um, I had another question for Sheikh Imran Nazar Hussain, and this question was regarding the post nuclear world war and Gog and Magog. As we know from Hadith that the Great War is coming, um, it's mentioned as the Malhama, the Great War, and we can assume, or as Sheikh Imran Nazar Hussain says, that it, it is going to be a nuclear world war now my question is regarding what will happen after the nuclear world war what would the situation be regarding um food um would, will there be shortage of food what will or will there be a famine or what will, will the situation be and the go the the people of Gog and Magog will they become cannibals and start eating people when when the when the shortage of food, um, are they going to be hunting people like we see in some movies um, when there's an apocalypse and the shortage of food then a group of people become cannibals, so are we going to be in the, in a similar kind of situation, um, also. The, there are some probably weak hadith that mentions about Gog and Magog being huge giant people and and they will when they when they are released they will start eating everything and they will drink the ocean. Um, they're going to be very hungry from being, you know, uh, locked behind iron gates or whatever. So. This is quite an important question, um, and a worrying one as well. What what would the situation be, post nuclear world war, or post Malhama? Um, would there be shortage of food? There's a hadith regarding the jal that mentions about this as a famine. So let's see what the sheikh has to say about this. First nuclear world war after the Malhama, when there's shortage of food, will Gog and Magog or the godless society become cannibals and start hunting people to eat them? Because I think one of the hadith mentions this. What we do have, no, we don't have any hadith about cannibalism. What we do have is that Dajjal will cause the rain to stop falling. And therefore, he has control over the climate. The first year, one third of the rain will stop falling, and one third of the crops will not grow. And then the second year, two thirds would not, rain would not fall. And then in the third year, no rain will fall. And every hoofed animal will die. And then the people ask, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how will we eat when there is no food? And then he said that every subhanallah will become food. Every alhamdulillah will become food. Every Allahu Akbar will become food. My understanding, and I can be wrong, and I have made mistakes in the past, and so I plead with you, do not, do not, do not accept my viewpoint unless you are convinced it is correct, and then you are responsible at that time. Don't blame me. That when, uh, when uh, uh, Banu Israel were in Sinai and there was no food, Allah sent food for them, the, the birds would be flying and very low, you can catch them. And then in the early morning at dawn, there was the honey which came down, something like honey, sticky. And you have to gather it before the sun comes up, otherwise it will melt. So Allah can send food for people when there is no food. The second instance we have is Maryam, when she was in the mihrab. <coughs> and when Zakaria alayhi salam would come and ask her, and he sees the food, Anna laki hadha, O Maryam, from where did you get this food? 
And she said, I ask, and Allah sent me the food. So therefore, the likely, the likely explanation is that the believers of Allah, who have sincerity in their hearts, can turn to Allah and ask for food, and Allah can send it to them. The last example we have is the one where there is a demand from the disciples of Nabi Isa Islam. We are asking you, ask Allah to send us a table full of cooked food. <laughs> cooked food. Eh? And uh, Nabi Isa Islam asked, and Allah sent a table with cooked food. So therefore, this is a possibility that at that time when there is famine, that Allah can provide food for his servants, yeah.